Hey guys, Desolate Magic here. Welcome to Mark Rosewater Tries to Justify Strixhaven, or as he calls it, Odds and Ends. So it's basically his uh, Q&A mailbag thing uh, that he always writes whenever they release a new thing. And this one's about Strixhaven, so he hops on his platform of choice, Twitter, and asks those people. That's right, those people as in people who would actually follow him on Twitter to ask him questions. Once in a while, those with legendary tier fortitude will actually watch for this after following him and then ask him seriously, like, deep questions. Like, like really biting questions about, like, why did you do this? This seems like a mistake. And to his credit, he occasionally will answer those questions, usually by giving a half answer, saying something vague or sidestepping it. So in other words, not answering it. Will we get any fastballs, any zingers in this one? Well, I haven't read it yet, so uh, here we go. And the first one is a real gem. It's by somebody who has a username, then comma, then wear a mask, cover your hands as their Twitter display name. You can't catch COVID through your, your skin, th through your fingers. ACE2 receptors in your nose is how it enters your bloodstream. People that were initially walking around at like the supermarket with gloves on, you're just an idiot. I walk around, touch whatever the hell I want, and just douse my hands in hand sanitizer. It's like the same thing, but less stupid. Anyway, this absolute credit to humankind asks, did you consider Tamiyo appearing in Strixhaven? Similar to how the Wanderer did in Ikoria. That is literally a completely different thing. She seems a good fit. Did you just assume her gender? Penalty for you. You have to wear three masks now. Uh, so he answers, we want to be careful about how often we do uh, Planeswalker cameo appearances as fans of that particular character get grumpy when they show up but don't get a card. I've got to say, that sounds not true, but I can assure you that is 100% true. Uh, the Wanderer has a specific gimmick. She's forced to keep planeswalking. Um, that's not really how I would describe it if you go read the extended description on the wiki, but okay. And that justifies her showing up occasionally. Yeah, she's basically like a whitewashed, clothing-wise, Carmen San Diego. As for why Tamio couldn't be in the set and get a Planeswalker card, we need to color balance our Planeswalkers for each set. And Strixhaven already has two blue Planeswalkers that are both essential to the story, Kazmina and Will. Will could have gone emo, okay? First he was in Wham, okay, let's move on to the 80s. He could have been in an emo punk band. Put on them black girl jeans and some guy liner and you are all set. Nissa went emo for one set, she went all black mana. Why would Tamu be there, teaching moonology? So, somebody with a cat in their profile image, so obviously a, a respectable gentleman, asks Mark, Factions are clearly a popular and successful approach to multicolor sets, but how do you keep Tarkir, Ravnica, Strixhaven at all? Told ya, classy boy using Latin. Just kidding, I hate people who use Latin. I hate really most of the legal system for using it. And for existing. Anyway, how do you keep them from eating each other's design space lunch? Well, if you look at Strixhaven, they didn't. It's literally just the Is It Guild. It's literally just Golgari. I half expected Mark to just put, we didn't, period, next question. Let's see what answer he actually gave. The secret to doing new faction sets is to make sure that those factions have an overall identity that's cohesive to the world they appear on. Yeah, a, a college of, of specific magical study? That could be literally anything. It, the, and the plane that it's on? has nothing to do with Strixhaven. So because Ravnica was the first modern faction set, uh, we had the freedom to just pick all the low-hanging fruit and have every two-color combination do the thing they were most known for. Yes, they're all guilds, but there isn't a much larger structure tying them together. Post-Ravnica faction sets must create a larger identity for the structure that allows factioning. For example, Strixhaven's factions are about instants and sorceries mattering. Okay, I don't remember the Is It Guild getting a trigger off of you casting a creature spell. Okay, I knew this defense would be absolute and utter nonsense. And by the way, oh, spells matter. Ooh, cast as many spells as possible. Learn as many spells as possible. That's not even, like, one specific college. That just is Strixhaven. That's all of Strixhaven. So, oh, you made a new two-color combination seem unique by making it the most generic, obvious thing ever? And have it only do with, like, the set location, not the plane? Fantastic. So he says, that just means the bar for faction sets has gone up and requires a lighter touch. Gone are the days where the colors alone are the identity. Why? Everybody loved Theros. Twice. 
Monocolored decks are more fair because they have a weakness, unlike the atrocities that are being played right now on Arena. You want to talk about a Swiss Army deck? You can literally go get things outside your deck. That's the definition of Swiss Army. So next up, somebody asks, uh, Strixhaven seems to include almost every single race that MTG has to offer, including several new anthropomorph... I can never say that word. Anthropomorphized animal races. Just curious, where are the goblins? You know what? Where's the leprechauns? I want the gold. Where are the gold at? I want some gold. I'm going to get a backhoe. I'm going to dig this tree up and I'm going to find me some gold. Oh, wait, leprechauns are offensive Irish stereotypes now, apparently. Oh, I guess we won't see them. Oh, wait, it's against white people. I guess the next set is going to be all leprechauns. Yeah, you thought it was going to be D&D. Nope, it's going to come out right out of the box. It's going to say, oops, all leprechauns. And then with the subtitle of uh, like like a tagline on the box of F white people, followed by, you know, dot, 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 not to imply that gingers are people. Anyway, his answer is, uh, there's uh, only so much space. I knew he was going to say that. And we decided to use Strixhaven to allow some other red creature types like dwarves, orcs, and afrites a chance to shine. Also, Lorehold has a spirit tribal component, so a bunch of red and white cards needed to be spirits. These answers are really obvious. I can't believe these people are actually, like, asking these questions. Like, they actually wanted to know. I think they just wanted to, like, get in this article. Now here's one that I caught that I didn't mention in the video, but I was wondering this. Uh, there's a card called Mascot Exhibition. It's a sorcery, mythic, cost seven generic. It says create a two, one white and black inkling creature token with flying, uh, a three, two red and white spirit creature token, and a four, four blue and red elemental creature token. Clearly two are missing and it's like the unofficial or official, I'm not sure, mascots of the other two colleges. Uh, I believe, what are we missing? A fractal and a pest. Yeah. Oh, I could have just read it. So Nicholas asks, why didn't pests and fractals make it onto the mascot card? Okay, you're intelligent, viewer of my channel, obviously. Um, why would that be? In your estimation, why were they not included on the card? That's correct. It's because that would require the card to be even more expensive, mana cost-wise. Yeah, it turns out if you make a spell do more and you generate more creatures, you have to make it cost more to balance it out. And then people just free cast it anyway because nobody ever sticks to that. So yeah, it's already seven. That makes it hard to play. Uh, you know, making the text fit. It's all the stuff you would have thought. Uh, pests actually have like a description. Um, like it's actually quite a lot of lines about like how they come out. They come out with a counter, what happens when they die, that kind of stuff. And then fractals were excluded because you have to describe how many counters they get. Like it's, it's a variable size thing. So the two with the most text were excluded. I mean, there you go. So... Somebody who clearly is new to magic says if Strixhaven had five other colleges for each of the allied color pairs, what types of subjects would they study? Oh yeah. Hey Mark, can you just design the entire universe all over again and do like double the work for no reason just to answer my question on Twitter? The answer is whenever you're designing something, you must decide whether you're leaving room for future designs. If you are, you specifically keep areas untouched, allowing a future design team to use them. I mean, come on, competing college or university, or campus, I don't know, they call each of them colleges. It's probably just a, another British misuse of the word, just like everything in their entire language, like biscuit, chips. I mean, we won the English language in the Revolutionary War, and we're keeping it. So if you aren't leaving room for a sequel, basically, you don't have to worry about saving future design space. Strixhaven was designed to be the latter, so they never intend to add different color combinations. If they revisit it, it will be the same. So he says, there will be no ally-colored university in the future. At least they don't have plans to do it. I mean, who knows? They're crazy. We deeply mined the top-down material to define the five colleges, and I think trying to create another whole school that feels distinct from Strixhaven would be somewhere between very hard and impossible. Um, just copy Harry Potter. That's what you did the first time. Help copy Lord of the Rings and have it be like... The opposite of Harry Potter. Like, it would, it would just be straight Lord of the Rings, where it's like, instead of some dopey, dumb students being bimbos and casting spells wrong and ha-ha funny situations, it would just be, like, real shit. Killing orcs, learning some real magic, Gandalf showing up, I mean, come on. Or, I mean, you know, Randolph or whatever. I mean, what did they name Loki? It's like Luki or something. When they rip something off, they try about as hard as the Chinese. It's like an upside down swoosh and it says like Nike with two E's. Just don't. So he says, hey, we might come back to Archivos because, you know, we didn't really feature the larger world. So if we could go back and do like Strixhaven 2 now with 100% less Strixhaven. 
But then he, he goes back to, would that have ally colors? My gut says no. So he's like, hey, every time you do five doesn't mean you got to do all ten. Okay, we got the Shards of Alara. We've got the, the uh, Cons of Tarkir or the Clans of Tarkir. So the next question, it's really long and complicated. I have to explain what they're talking about. And honestly, even I'm not that familiar with the story. So, I mean, read it on your own time if you want. We're going to skip to what was the reasoning to use enemy color pairs for the colleges instead of the allied color pairs? Yeah, especially considering we were just in Ravnica. So his answer is removing the Ravnica sets from the mix would uh, deal with all 10 color pairs for the record. Here's how ally and enemy color pairs have fared in getting sets focused on them. Sets that focus on ally color combinations. Legends, Ice Age, Invasion, Plane, Shift, Shadow, Mirror, Dragons of Tarkir, and Unstable. Sets that focus on enemy color combinations. I assume he's not incorrect here. Apocalypse and Eventide. That's it. I mean, Ravnica like doesn't not focus on them but i mean okay i guess he meant exclusively so ally color combinations have uh, over three times as many sets dedicated to them in addition there hasn't been an enemy color set since 2008 13 years ago i didn't even realize that and this is there hasn't been a traditional gold enemy color set since 2001 20 years ago so he's just like yeah we're doing it Although we've got cover your mask, cover your ass person or whatever again, because I guess they get two questions. Honestly, their profile picture is either of like a bronze statue or they're in blackface. So just call it like I see it. That's what it looks like to me. Like I said, go check it out yourself. So they asked, uh, could a return show more people slash places from outside the school? Why did he take that question when he already answered it? So, I mean, basically to summarize, yeah, he wants to go back to Strixhaven, so he had the creative team specifically give hints about the rest of the plane, Arc Kavios. So if we were to go back, yes, it would be that. So, there you go. Next up, somebody asked, while designing, do you consider learn to be better, worse, or equal to draw a card? Yeah, no, the question we all want to uh, know is why the hell did anybody think that after the response to, oh, go get something from outside the game by, like, literally the entire community, why the hell did you think Learn was a good idea? What are you smoking? And who's going to get fired over this? That's what he probably meant to ask. Well, Mark dodged the question regardless. It says, uh, as this is a little outside my area of expertise, I asked Yanni Skaldnik, the lead designer for Strixhaven. Here's what he said. Uh, let me stop you right there, Mark. You personally came up with and thought that Companion was a good mechanic. That's why we're asking you. Because if you're going to say, oh, I designed um, Companion and it got you rejected once because it was so broken and awful that I brought it back and it was the worst mistake of the last 10 years. And we basically had to like blanket ban it all by rolling out a new rule. But when it comes to something so idiotic but also really simple as learn, oh, I had nothing to do with it. Uh-huh. Very believable, Mark. Anyway, Yanni said, in a general sense, worse. Many of the learn cards are ones we've uh, decided we wouldn't print if you replace learn with draw a card. I assume he means because they're so weak. Because if, if he meant because they're so powerful, that makes absolutely no sense. That it would be like harder to get them and more random. And yeah, I mean, I was worried because it's such a toxic, awful idea for a mechanic, but boy, did they water him down. I'm still worried about Blue Green's ability to go get them and, and draw lands, but uh, so far, most of the ramp decks that I've seen, they're very slow and beatable, so there's that, but uh, they haven't been using it much, and I really think they should. I mean, I'm probably just going to build it myself to prove it like I always do. So uh, he says, drawing is always great, while taking advantage of learn requires more thought in your drafting and deck building. Yeah, it's a nightmare in draft. Uh, that said, once you've paid that deck building cost, you'll find plenty of situations where learning feels stronger than drawing a card. Yes, because it's a Swiss army knife of exactly what you need, exactly when you need it, which is too broken. Uh, so somebody with hail from Dragon Warrior as their profile image, okay, asks permanent slash spell MDFC, so modal, uh, oh, mo modal double face cards. Had to think about that one for a second. Those seem like they have a lot of potential, but they're seemingly very few in number in the set and not very pushed. Was this a result of Eldraine's adventure mechanic playing in a similar space in Standard? I assume he means like the reasoning was the same, and I, I don't remember what that reason was, but if I had to guess without reading the answer, it's, uh, well, now we have to play test like 300 cards instead of 250 if we make a bunch double-sided because it's literally a different spell. 
Uh, he says when Strixhaven was first given a slot in the upcoming multi-year set schedule, the plan was to have it focus heavily on modal double face cards, most of which would have a permanent on one side and an instant of sorcery on the back. Years later, Adventures got, a, uh, Adventures got added to Throne of Eldraine, and it forced us to rethink how Strixhaven was going to work. The knowledge that Strixhaven couldn't lean as heavily on MDFCs as I originally planned was part of my decision to recommend stretching the MDFCs across three sets. You know people hated it even, like, the first time they did it, right? And he is well aware of this. So he's like, well, let's spread it over three then. So that people get to deal with this shit three times. Mark needs to get fired, like, right now. Anyway, he says, oh yeah, that'll totally make it different. And, and, and they totally feel different from what would be on an adventure card. It's literally the exact same thing. Oh, except you still have a card back, it doesn't ruin drafts, and it doesn't make you take a card out of a sleeve to flip it over. So really, you should have just done adventures again. Then he took literally the same question again, which is why wasn't Tamio in the set? Although they specifically asked, like, were there any other Planeswalkers considered, like, for example, Duretti or Tamio? So get this. We knew early on that the set was going to have a mono black Planeswalker slot and the initial penciling of Planeswalkers did have Davriel in that slot. That would have been awesome. But once we came up with the idea that this was where Liliana was hiding out disguised as a different person, we quickly made the change. I would have preferred Dav, but I mean, it, it is cool that Liliana's hiding out there. I mean, I haven't even read chapter one yet, but I, I just think it's a cool idea. So, okay. But he does say, other than that, I mean, we already had Liliana and Kazmina as teachers, so we didn't really consider everybody else. Uh, some other just... Hashtag I'm a douchebag SJW person on Twitter with a really douchey looking profile image says how tied to color pie expectations were you in designing the schools? I think we all know the answer to that. It's not at all. They took the color pie, just kicked it out a window and then forgot that it existed. Green, give it card draw. White, give it counter spells. Red, give it counter spells. Yeah, I get it. Tybalt wasn't even in the set, whatever. They don't give a flying f about the color pie anymore. As soon as you start breaking the color pie, you can sell more cards to commander players, and that's what they want. So, it's really that simple. His stupid answer is, the colors have the abilities they have access to. Sure, we can bend a little. Oh, that's what you did. But you can't build a multicolor faction around things the colors can't do. Well, you did. Um, that said, each color has access to a lot of different abilities, so it's possible to play up some and play down others. The biggest impact on picking what colleges did what was not the color pie, shockingly enough, I know, other than we had to stay in it. He put that in parentheses, and then clearly they did not. Um, but the act of capturing the top-down flavor of the school while being careful to stay away from the respective guild. I don't actually think that was a sentence, but he's so full of shit, I'm not going to read it again. Oh, we got masky clappy hand person for the third time. Thank God. Strixhaven has more than wizards. How were all the mage classes picked? Okay, you officially get the Strixhaven dunce cap. The inky boys are Slytherin. So they get warlock because they would, like, make deals with demons because they're awful and they're the bad guys. Anyway, he says, since Throne of Eldraine, magic has had five magic casting creature types. Cleric, Druid, Shaman, Warlock, and Wizard. I can virtually guarantee you that's false. Let me just think about this for like, okay, Dryad. I was going to say one second, but <laughs> it took less than that. Witch, Fairy, Satyr, Centaur. Well, okay, I mean, I could add like, you know, Minotaur, but like not all Centaurs and Minotaurs are, you know, they, they would be like a Cleric or a Warlock. Okay, okay. But I'm pretty sure all fairies have magic. So, I mean, I'm just saying, I'll defend that one. I mean, Dryad, have you ever heard of a Dryad without magic? I mean, just like ghosts, vampires. And I get it, we have, we have like a vampire wizard, a vampire cleric. Well, we shouldn't, because as far as I know, they all use magic. Anyway, after that ridiculous statement, he goes on to say, during vision design, we talked about breaking up the creatures types by college. But that's racist. <laughs> okay, he would have put that if he had the balls. Uh, but there wasn't a great fit. Yeah, that's what it was. Clerics being white, black, and wizards being blue, red made a lot of sense. Literally copying Ravnica. I'm glad he at least admits it. But the rest didn't fit in quite as neatly. Wither blue made sense as druid, but then warlock was left out of both black colleges. I mean, in my head, no, it wouldn't be, but okay, I'll take your word for it. If wither bloom was warlock, it required lore hold to be shaman. Okay, I mean, all right. Which was fine for red, but odd in white. Eh, I mean, eh, 
maybe. And Quadrix being druid was fine in green, but odd in blue. Why can't you have blue druids? I mean, blue green druids are basically just merfolk. You know, I still feel like I just named a bunch of magical races, but they're going with titles. Was I actually wrong? I don't know. Is Dryad a creature type or is it a title? I know there's more than five, okay? I don't care if you want to dismiss everything I just came up with on the fly. I know that he's wrong about there only being five magic casting creature types. And I know that because I'm too lazy to look it up, I'll just say, I bet somebody already left it in the comment section. And then I'll go read the comment section. Which is kind of like doing research, except it's making you guys do the research. I mean, come on, pixies? Like, come on, they're inherently magical. You can't just say, well, they're pixie wizards. They all use magic. But then it's like, oh, the type of magic. Is it holy clerical magic or druidic natural magic? I, I'm going to think of one by the time this is done. I am determined. Is necromancer a type? Separate from warlock? Oh, lich. Because a, a lich wouldn't technically be a wizard. Sort of. Anymore. And finally, the last question. He actually took one that's pretty pointed. It seems like Commander, the format, is heavily influencing the philosophy and design of standard sets in the form of high CMC splashy effects and higher density of legendary creatures. It's like I've been saying all along, and like they've admitted in one article that I'm sure they wish they could delete, but I keep referencing it about every you know fifth video. They felt like it wasn't fair to make standard products for standard people. They wanted everyone to buy the standard products. So they started including cards that were more commander-oriented in standard. And then Rune Standard drove the power level to the moon, and everybody left, and now Arena is dying, so... Great decision, guys. Also, in the last uh, survey that Mark himself took, it was like 80% of people aren't happy with the power level of standard and think it's too high. And that's like his number one fans that think that Morrow can do nothing wrong. So it's 100% back in reality with like the level-headed players. We're all pissed. They ruined it. Everybody quit the game. It was the number one worst mistake in the entire history of the game. By far. Nothing even comes close. Other than, I guess, hiring Mark Rosewater. But, uh, yeah. Finally. This guy on Twitter is calling him out on it saying, Hey, it looks like you're just sticking a bunch of overpowered commander crap in standard. Is this a trend to expect from the future? He asks. Using Twitter for iPhone, because of course. And Mark says, You'll notice that I've stopped referring to the non-supplemental sets as standard legal, and I'm now calling them premier sets. Oh, so you just changed the name and now everything's good. The reason for this is a change of philosophy about how R&D sees the main releases. They are no longer just focused on standard and limited, but are instead trying to keep mindful of all the major formats seeing play. Yeah, he just summed up what that entire article said where the, the I don't know, staff who wrote it all agreed, okay, this is what we're doing now because it'll make more money. And then it backfired spectacularly and they had to come out with a new secret layer every two days so that they could make up the money and pretend that they're doing well. They are not doing well from a player count perspective. But it's cool, guys. They can blame COVID and keep doing stupid tie-ins that make them even more money. Don't forget to buy your cheap uh, sterling silver jewelry for 10 times its normal price. So he says, as the data implies, Commander is currently the most played format. That's because you ruined standard by printing commander cards in it. I hope you understand that. Anyway, discounting, quote, playing what I own at the kitchen table as a format, because that absolutely is the number one format. I'm glad he mentioned that. Just free for all, here's a deck. I made a deck. Anything goes, this used to be standard legal. Let's fight. That is the number one format it always will be. Anyway, he says, we want to make sure that each premiere set has cards that are well suited to it. So yes, I think you can call this a trend for the future. Really? Really? You're not going to back it up considering the amount of money you've lost and the amount of customers you've lost? You're actually killing the game by doing this. You should power it back down and make standard for standard and then just double down and do two commander sets per year, two modern horizons and one, you know, master set. And there you go. There's your money. There's the products for those people. Standard can be for standard people. Everybody's happy. Everybody comes back. Standard is playable again. It's not just a bunch of overpowered, broke, high level shit. And that would save your company. If you don't do that, you are going to lose the game and your company. So I would suggest you rethink that, Mark. Or you know what? People who aren't Mark, fire Mark. There you go. Those dumb, greedy, bullshit ideas would go with them. And the rumor is their new CEO, uh, I just keep calling him John Cox. It's like some, it's like Don Cox or something. I don't know, Mr. Cox. 
It's not the famous singer John Cox. It's it's that's like his brother or something. I don't know. Whoever the new Cox guy is that allegedly Hasbro sent in, he's the one behind all these greedy cash grabs where, why are we printing standards so low powered? Nobody wants it but standard players. Who are a bunch of whiny entitled net deckers that just want to be told what to do and whine about the price all the time. Why don't we just make standards super high powered and keep power creeping it like Yu-Gi-Oh does? Yeah, allegedly that's who was really behind it. Mark just, I guess, thinks it's a good idea too. Because he's Mark. I don't know. He seems to be very aware because he took the damn survey himself twice on two different platforms that both screamed in his face standard is too high powered we hate it and so he ends with although the amount of the various elements will ebb and flow from set to set depending upon the needs of that set so he could just mean that the core sets are still going to be shit just low powered basic bitch trash that nobody wants but the other three will be pushed to oblivion oh by the way it's four this year because we're getting two innistrads I don't know. I would fire him just to be safe, even though he's leaving the door open to be like, well, maybe we might power down some of the sets, you know, so that people can play standard, maybe post rotation for a set or two before we completely ruin the power level with a bulldozer. I don't know. I don't think he meant that. I don't think he knows what the hell's going on. So then he ends with class dismissed. I'm already cringing. My God, these stupid school puns. I, I am at my limit. I'd rather be around another gunfight at another casino than listen to one more damn pun from anybody from Seattle. It's time to stop. No more. This is why I'm not on Fiverr. That dude is a legend. He, he can out voice act anybody. I can't do a good uh, Filthy Frank either, so I'm not even going to try. Anyway, yeah, that was Mark trying to justify anything in Strixhaven. He really took some softball questions, but he did sneak one in at the end and then just, you know, lied about it and dodged it and doubled down on, on what everybody hates being a good idea. So there is going to be a part two, though. And you know that if it isn't complete and utter vanilla, boring, dumb trash, I am absolutely going to cover it. So hit subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Uh, I crossed 50k again. Subs for at least the fifth or sixth time. YouTube keeps, well, okay, clearing and deleting old accounts. I mean, my, my channel's like nine years old, so like, okay, I get it. But, uh, you know, they've also been unsubbing people aggressively with their stupid unsub glitch slash on purpose mind control experiment or whatever the hell they, they won't admit to. So do check that you're subbed. Like I said, I found myself unsubbed from two channels, like ever in the history of like anything. And I'm subbed to like 260 channels. So it's like, okay, it's not that many. It's not like they took half my subs and just deleted them. But there were two where I'm like, I am 100% sure that I was subbed to this person. I just happened to notice, I haven't heard from this person in a while. And I looked it up. Oh, YouTube unsubbed me. Thanks. And in the last like two weeks, it has been aggressively unsubbing people from like everything for some reason. So if you got unsubbed, you know, just, just take this second to check. Also, I mean, I've been watching Brandon Herrera's channel for like four or five months and realized that I just never bothered to sub to it because they just kept showing me his videos. So if that's you and you're like, oh, whoops, people constantly tell me, oh, I missed that video of yours. I don't know why. I'm like, I, I, I can see, by the way, when you leave a comment, if you're subscribed or not, I reply to every one of those comments with, you're not actually subscribed to me. So please actually check it. I would also love to stay above 50k for once. So hey, thanks for watching everybody. I'm gonna go take a fistful of allergy pills because my god it's starting already this year and I'll see you guys next video.